this month, Ranger Nick is going international. Yeah, that's right. While traveling abroad for UGA, Dr. Furman grabbed his trusty old iPad and headed to the hills of Scotland for a lesson on something that is well over 10,000 years old. So we've been talking a lot about pond management on the farm monitor, and this month, Ranger Nick comes to you from the other side of the pond. I'm in Dunfries, Scotland, hanging out with Dr. Emily Taylor. We're talking about peat bogs. We're talking about managing land the same way we do in the United States with conservation easements. You're going to love this. We're digging into it right now. Dr. Taylor, tell us a little bit about your role in conserving these peat bogs. Okay, so I'm a peatland action project officer and uh, we're here to help deliver the Scottish Government um, on a huge peatland restoration programme we have. We have £3 million this year to spend on peatland restoration. And why are we doing that? Well, for hundreds of years we've managed our peat bogs for other things other than habitat and the carbon store that they are. So we've drained them to make them better for grazing, we've drained them for forestry and we've burnt them as well to improve the grazing and now we're realising that's not the best practice. Mm. So we're busy trying to block up all those ditches, all those drains, raise the water table back up and get a function bog once again. It's interesting. So what we're saying is 40 some years ago, we we're telling people to drain these. Today, we're telling people to leave them alone. What's your role in helping bring about that action change with some of these farmers? Yeah, so it's a huge sea change in thinking. You know, we, we were incentivizing drainage for, for many years, right up until the 70s. Um, and now we're saying, actually, we know that's not the best thing to do. So I'm there to go out, talk to the landowners, talk to the farmers, sit down over a cup of tea, talk about peatland restoration and what it means for them. It can be an integrated management with the rest of their management. Um, it can work in their favour as well. So it's just getting that message across. Face to face is always the best. That sounds so similar to what we do in the U.S. with Cooperative Extension. Y'all know I always put a plug in for our extension agents across the country. That kind of stuff is going on right here in Scotland. And I tell you, we're going to have to, maybe we'll cut this short. I'm kind of sinking over here, Emily, to be honest with you. We are standing in a peat bog. This is, this is wild. Exactly. <laughs> you are doing a good job. <laughs> All right, Emily, so push this thing the rest of the way down. Let's see how many feet of peat we've got. Now, you're still going. Still going. All the way. Holy, we are out. You put in how many? Well, seven in there. Seven, each one of them about three feet? Yeah, yeah. 20 plus feet of peat. Incredible. How did this come to be? Well, this peat bog is probably around about 10,000 years old. These, this is called a lowland raised bog, and these formed from the little lakes that were left behind at the end of the last ice age. So these little lakes eventually became wetlands filled in with vegetation. Gradually that vegetation was compressed over time and actually started to grow as a dome. And this is when you get your peat formation. And the peat is formed from your sphagnum moss, which we're surrounded by here. Wow, and that stuff, for our friends at home, that sphagnum moss, that is, it's this stuff. Yeah. And this is the stuff, I'll come over to you as I walk through this peat bog. This is the stuff that, look, you can just wring it out with all the water. This is the stuff that we see in our floral arrangements to kind of on top of that soil to hold that moisture in. Incredible. So we've got peat. Doc, you mentioned something about these other kinds of vegetation down here and you call this what? This is called heather. So we've, got, so we've, we've met peat. We've met heather. Emily, I'm Nick. Good to see everybody. Isn't this wild to learn about this progression? Really cool stuff. So we're on our way back to the car, walking with Emily off of this peat bog. And Emily, I walked by some of this heather that you introduced us to earlier. And it looks like someone has spit on this stuff. We're the only ones out here. Or cow slobber is on it. What in the world is this stuff all over this plant? Well, I think this stuff is very much like your spittle bog you guys will have at home. Um, so there's actually a little insect lives in that kind of spittle, what you think is spittle. So it's like a protective coating, really, that they're living in. And you find that across all the heather around here. That's incredible. I mean, it's, it's seeing that stuff out here reminded us of home a little bit. So I thought that was good. You talked about cattle grazing on this peat bog and talking about cow slobber. How does that work into this protected area? Yeah, so peat bogs like this, um, one of our management techniques is actually using livestock, using cattle. Cattle are really good at getting on there, roughing the place up, bashing down some of the really grassy tussocks, which can get a bit overgrown, um, and we don't want loads of rank grass in our bog. They're also really good at bashing down any tree regeneration as well, and trees are not always the best thing for a bog. So we'll use really hardy varieties like Galloway cattle, Highland cattle as well. It's kind of conservation grazing, if you like. Wow, a balance between agriculture and here, preservation of this bog. Very interesting stuff. 
Well, as a light rain falls down here in southern Scotland, my friend and colleague, Dr. Dennis Duncan, and I came to Scotland to plan a study abroad. And Dr. Duncan's been running the camera today. He's done a wonderful job. While we were here, we had a chance to meet up with Dr. Emily Taylor. We so appreciate you, Dr. Taylor, yeah. spending some time talking about nice. bogs. We met Pete and Heather. It was just a great time. Hey, y'all, we appreciate you watching all the way 4,000 miles away, bringing you some knowledge about agriculture. You know what to do. Go on to Facebook, check out the Georgia Farm Monitor page, and while you're there, you can check out the Ranger Nick page. And until next time, for the Farm Monitor, I'm Ranger Nick reminding you that enthusiasm is contagious, so pass it on from Scotland. We'll see you back here again next month. See ya.